Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We have this 2006 Honda Ridgeline. And the other day I was using my key and turned it in the ignition and it did crack. Uh, that key should not look that way. I'll put another one up next to it. Um, yeah, so this is the one that messed up. And you can see it has a lot of damage on it. And so all I did was just put it in, twisted it, and thankfully I was able to pull it back out. But if you're not, you should be able to get a pair of needle nose and pull it out. I'm going to show you how you can fix this pretty inexpensively. Um, it comes with almost all the tools you need as well, but I'll go over all that in the video and uh, go ahead and get a new one of these. I'm gonna go through the tools and the supplies that I used. And so I went to eBay. I'm not sponsored by eBay or the company that I got this part at, uh, but you're just gonna type in your year. So mine was a 2006 Honda Ridgeline, and we're looking for a key fob uncut. And then you can search for that. There's a couple of options. This top one, at least on my search, is the one that I used. Um, Again, not sponsored by this company, but I do want to point out a couple of things. It has the screw. It has this little uh, key insert piece, which is really important. It comes with the two new plastic pieces, which mine were the broken ones, and also comes with uh, the little insert for the buttons, which was kind of nice. Also comes with little screwdrivers. I did buy the two-pack, uh, less than 10 bucks with tax, free shipping on it. Again, not sponsored by this at all. But I did want to just point out that this is where I went. This is what I got. I also used a pick as well. But those are the only tools and the supplies that I used to do this project. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into the fix for this project. Um, I wanted to show you again, the key that's broken is the one on the right. I swear if I did it again, it would break completely off. Super, super loose. I'm going to show you there's a little, the buttons are in the package. Um and it will uh, replace the broken key really well. You can also do your other one as well if it's starting to get a little wobbly and loose, uh, but it does come with a screwdriver, comes with a new plastic piece. You will need the pick as well. I know I mentioned that, but I wanted to show you in real time kind of what I'm doing. Um, you can pull it all out and uh, don't lose the little screw. It is very easy to lose that piece. Um, this does not come with like a new insert. You have to reuse the insert. Uh, from yours, but you're going to go ahead and take that screwdriver on the key that's broken and you're going to want to put some pressure on it and uh, you can see me holding it with my left hand uh, to just get that started so we don't break the screw and the plastic piece and we can actually get that screw out successfully. These aren't the best screwdrivers, but it does have the right tip on it and so uh, not again, not the most user friendly tip. But yeah, you can start to see how broken all that is. And uh, I am going to have to break it kind of out of that piece. And then you'll see the big metal flange on it as I pull up right there. Um, and it really officially is broken now. But that's what you could have grabbed if it got stuck in the ignition right there uh, with a pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm sure that's happened to somebody. Uh, this is pretty well put together. Um, you got to use some force for the new piece to get it off, which is good. That's what you want. And here's that old uh, insert. And like I was saying, it does come with the new buttons, but it does not come with the actual little key fob piece. You do need to transfer that out. So I'm going to kind of set everything up just to make sure you can kind of see what we're doing really clearly. And you can see right here, I'm using a pick. That really will help you not break everything. Um, and then we're going to get the little piece out and that is kind of encased in the kind of feels like silicone almost over it. Um, there's the buttons right there. Um, you can reuse those buttons if you want, uh, but you will need that little piece. So go ahead and open up the new one that is kind of empty, kind of weird, but, uh, go ahead and open that one up as well. So we can transfer the components that need to be transferred over. And the new one is very stiff, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's going to stick together well, and that's what we want. And I'm going to transfer the battery as well. Make sure you put the battery on the correct direction, the same as how it came. And then we will uh, go ahead and get the little silicone piece out of this. Put your old insert in. You must have that in there, or else it's not going to unlock. 
uh, that has the buttons and stuff on it. I did just want to double check to make sure all of it's headed the correct way. You can see the buttons will hit the little plastic pieces on the other side. And it does have that silicone insert again that, it, that will help keep it a little more waterproof um, or at least water resistant. And this one was kind of hard to push together. So take your time. Don't jam it, but make sure all the buttons are lined up properly. And I'm going to go ahead and test it there. And it is locking and unlocking. So that's exactly what we want to see on this. You can also try the panic button and annoy your neighbors if you so choose to do so. Um, it just turns on and turns off just how it should. And so that is working right. And we're going to go ahead and insert that into the new one. And go ahead and slide your key piece up in there. Uh, this is a little hard to do, but again, it fits really snugly. It is cut really well, but it does take some power to pull. And then you want to make sure that that hole is lined up in there. And I put the little piece in too soon. Uh, you're going to try to put it in there and it's not going to fit because they do have a little locking mechanism with those grooves right there. And that will slide up and in. It does take a little bit of force and make sure you have it on the right side. And uh, go ahead and kind of wiggle that in and push it into place. Mine had just a little bit of like almost a clicking sound when it was in place. And you can also see through it where the little keyhole is. Go ahead and put in your fob, the component piece, and go ahead and click on the plastic cover. And uh, make sure that's nice and secure. And there's really only one last step. It is that screw. Please use the screw they provided. It is longer than the original screw. Uh, you may want to put some Loctite on this. I didn't have any handy, but uh, that always does help make sure it stays in there and is nice and secure for years to come. Uh, it did take a little bit of time to screw this in because it is quite a bit longer than the other, and it just kind of pushes everything together because it's going through both sides of the plastic, the key itself, and the little key insert piece that you put on. And that's nice and secure. Um, it looks really good. It looks very similar to the original one, minus the Honda symbol on the back. I did want to show you a little bit more in depth of the broken part that uh, the original one had. And uh, it was a pretty good design, except that eventually it probably would fail because most plastic pieces do over time. And so uh, overall, this is a good uh, replacement component. And so that's the original one. And here is the remade one. Overall, I'm very satisfied for less than $5 for one key to be able to do this instead of spending a couple hundred. If you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.